sometimes I come across a paper that makes me want to never look at a scientific journal again. This is one of them. It's a group of philosophers and sociologists who want to regularly poll scientists to keep track of the scientific consensus. For this, they conducted a proof-of-concept study in which participants were asked to agree or disagree with the statement, brace yourself, science has put it beyond reasonable doubt that COVID-19 is caused by a virus. The innovative part of their method is that both the email and the text were very very short. Participants were just asked to click on a link and mark how much they agreed with the statement on a five-point scale ranging from strongly agree to strongly disagree. According to the press release, this means that they have uncovered a new method to measure global scientific consensus. Finally, prove that real progress still happens in science. But before I move on, let's appreciate for a moment the question they're asking. COVID-19 is, according to the World Health Organization, an infectious disease caused by the SARS-CoV-2 virus. If you don't trust the WHO, Wikipedia agrees. We literally have images of that virus. We know beyond any reasonable doubt that this virus exists. And COVID-19 is by definition whatever disease that virus causes. The only way you can not agree with the statement that COVID-19 is caused by a virus is that you didn't understand the question. For example, you could interpret it to mean that all of the symptoms that are frequently attributed to COVID-19 are caused by a virus. But that's not what they asked. That said, what do you think the responses looked like? The researchers invited over 20,000 scientists from various disciplines from 12 countries and got about 7,000 replies. 93.2% agreed or strongly agreed with the statement that COVID-19 is caused by a virus. The fraction does not depend a whole lot on the respondents' area of expertise. They think that this study was a great success and, according to the press release, following the success of the pilot, the team has expanded the the network to 80 institutions, incorporating 50,000 scientists worldwide, and the research team aims to make this tool a regular feature of global science communication, helping inform society on critical scientific issues affecting all of us. This is about the last thing the world needs. What this pilot study documents is that about 7% of the respondents either didn't understand the question, were trolling, or both. But science deniers all over the world can now go and say that 7% of all scientists don't even agree that COVID is caused by a virus, which I remind you is true by definition. It pains me especially that this nutty idea comes from philosophers and sociologists who should really know better. Philosophically, science is not done by consensus. It's done by argument. There's no better story to illustrate this than that of Albert Einstein's reaction when in 1931 a book was published with the title 100 Authors Against Einstein that supposedly showed that Einstein's theory of relativity was wrong. What did he say? If I were wrong, it would only take one. In science, it doesn't matter what your opinion is if you have no evidence and no argument to support it. It doesn't matter how many people agree with you. It doesn't matter if there's some poll to back you up. It doesn't matter how many subscribers you have on YouTube. The only thing that matters is whether you have a good argument. That's why the IPCC does not write their reports by consensus mechanism. It's not how science works. What they do, or at least try to do, is to go through all scientific claims and look at the evidence for them. Yes, the IPCC process has problems, but at least it's not consensus-based. And sociologically, the problem is that the poll results impact the scientific community. This shouldn't happen because scientists should all have training to prevent social biases, but unfortunately they don't. So most will adjust their opinion to fit the supposed consensus and that'll streamline the scientific community even more than is already the case. What we should do is create an institution that collects and evaluates scientific evidence and gives out confidence values based on evidence. But constantly evaluating the scientific consensus is an overall horrible idea because at the end of the day, no matter how many scientists you poll, you'll always find at least one who misunderstands the 
the question, one who just likes annoying sociologists, and one who answers C on a scale from 1 to 5. I don't like to waste my time, so I'm constantly looking for ways to learn more efficiently, not just faster, but also so that I remember it better. I've recently begun using this app called Imprint, and that has worked very well for me. Imprint has a lot of content on personal development, science and technology, so it's exactly what I'm interested in. Like, for example, this course on how to be more productive. One of the things I learned from this, for example, is that it's a good idea to schedule time for non-work activities in your calendar, because otherwise you tend to procrastinate or overwork. I found this to be really Really helpful advice. They have courses, visual book summaries and quick read articles, but I like the courses best. Calling it an app is not a good way to put it, it's a modern learning method really. It helps you make a habit of discovering new content and collecting useful information. Even if I only have a few minutes a day, I always get something out of it. And yes, of course, I have a special offer. The first 200 of you to subscribe will get a seven-day free trial and 20% off an annual subscription. All you have to do is scan the QR code or use my link imprintapp.com slash Sabine. So give it a try. If it works for me, maybe it works for you too. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.